Are you struggling to make your first 100K or next? Are you pretending you're successful, but barely getting by? Are you tired of comparing yourself to millionaires and billionaires who make it look so easy? Welcome to First 100K, the number one entrepreneur voice in America. I talk about the important things that no one else is talking about like how to make your first $100,000 because I believe this is where 90% of entrepreneurs get stuck. And I tackle the mental game of entrepreneurship that we all secretly struggle with but won't admit. My guests are successful entrepreneurs who share their mistakes, their number one fears, their daily habits, and their superpowers that push them over the 100K mark. I'm your host, your coach, your friend, Joseph Warren. I'm also a 10-time failed entrepreneur and the owner of two co-working spaces here in Tampa, Florida. This show was created for you, the entrepreneur who's pushing to break through the elusive 100K milestone. Wherever you are in your business, you're just 100K away. Today, my featured guest believes in entrepreneurs. At 19 years old, he built, then sold a biotech software company. At age 22, he was a venture capitalist helping raise $500,000 to $15 million. He now runs the biggest YouTube channel for entrepreneurs with over 2 million subscribers. He's wrote four books and speaks globally. He wants to solve the world's biggest problems. He's going to tell us more more about that on today's show. He has set two world records, uses a trampoline and stand-up desk, owns Canada's largest salsa dance studio, and has a giant Doritos bag in front of him all day long, just to remind him that he's stronger than those darn Doritos. Toronto is his home. He's a husband, father, TSM fan, and Timo Main, and... Gary Vaynerchuk has this to say about him. He says he consumes so much content and then knows how to DJ it to inspire people. Ed Milet says Napoleon Hill was the single greatest influencer of all time in personal development. My guest today is the modern day Napoleon Hill. Please welcome to your first 100K, Evan Carmichael. You can find him at evancarmichael.com. Evan, welcome to the show. Go ahead and fill in some of the gaps in that intro, would you? Appreciate the love, man. Thanks for having me. It's, it's, uh, it's always humbling. You know, um, what, what else is missing from that intro? I think it's pretty good. Uh, people usually know me either for the, the books that I've got or the YouTube channel. I'm trying to solve the world's biggest problem, which I think is people don't believe in themselves enough. I default to thinking everybody's got Michael Jordan level talent at something. You're, mm-hmm. you're the greatest in the world at something. Uh, it's probably not what you went to school for. It's probably not what your parents did, but something. And you have to go off and chase it down. And I think it's entrepreneurs who are going to solve all the world's major problems. And that's who I'm trying to help. That's awesome. How did you come to discover your Michael Jordan moment for your life? So I think your purpose comes from your pain. I think whatever you struggle the most with as a human, emotional pain is the thing that then you want to help other people with and through because you got out of it. And there's lots of people who are currently struggling with what you used to struggle with. And so even, even in looking at, you know, your show, you probably struggled in building your business and now you want to help so much, help other people not struggle as much as you did. And I don't know the whole foundation story, but anybody who's purpose driven, it always comes from some painful moment in their life that you want to make it easier for other people. Cause there's so many people who currently are who you used to be. So I struggled a lot as an entrepreneur. Um, I was making 300 bucks a month. The idea of making $100,000 in a year was, <laughs> would have been amazing to me. I was mm-hmm. nowhere close to that. Struggling made it harder on myself because I told my friends and family, well, more my friends, that, that I had no money. i sorry, that I, that I was like hustling and living the entrepreneur life. Meanwhile, I was broke and couldn't afford 20 bucks, right? So if they wanted to go for pizza and beer, I just told them I was really busy and hustling hard. Meanwhile, like I really wanted to go, but I just couldn't afford it. And they would have spotted me and... and done something cheaper, but I was just too embarrassed and ashamed to, to let them know that I wasn't doing well. Um, and so because of, I've had so many, you know, trials and tribulations in building up my first business and how much I struggled, I want to help and give back to help other entrepreneurs not struggle as much as I did. And so that's what, that's what I'm great at. That's what I love doing. That's awesome. How, why do you think that 90% of entrepreneurs 
uh, are struggling to make their first 100K. Why is that like such this epic milestone? Now you're looking back on it at the time, it seemed so far into you, like you said, looking back on it now, it's probably a, you know, a nickel. Why do you think so many entrepreneurs are struggling there? Why, why do we all struggle to get over that 100K milestone? I think one, the starting point is people pick a business just because they're trying to make money. Mm. I think too many entrepreneurs just try to see an opportunity without actually loving the thing that they're doing. And, and then they end up not winning because you're going up against somebody who loves what they're doing. You might say, I'm going to start a podcast and make 100K from a podcast. Great. You better love interviewing people. Or you better love doing monologues because if you don't love it and you're just chasing it because it's a hot opportunity, you're going to lose because you're going up against people who love it, who, who love doing it inside out. And so I think that is already a, a failure point for so many people. Do you actually love the business or are you just chasing an opportunity? Inside of doing what you love then is figuring out how do I combine what I love doing with what brings value to other people? And people haven't figured out how to take that thing that they love and make it useful to somebody else. Just because it's, it's something you enjoy doing, it doesn't mean someone's going to pay you for it. Mm -hmm. And so people struggle in the monetization part. Some people think money is everything. Some people think money is the root of all evil, right? Where it's really the love of money is the root of all evil, but people forget that first part and they think that money is the root of all evil. Uh, and so they don't learn to make money, which is, which is important. Like you have to make money if you're an entrepreneur. It just can't be your number one goal right? Money is important, but your purpose and the reason for the business has to be something bigger than that. Most people don't figure that out. I agree with you so much on that. All right, let's talk about both those things, the money and the passion. Mm -hmm. um, but most of my listeners are stopped in monetizing their passion, right? Mm -hmm. They just like you said. And by the way, that was me. I, I created that limiting belief as a young man that, uh, that money was the root of all evil. I, mm -hmm. I took out the obsession or the love of Mm -hmm. um, I created that limiting belief. And then I would always get to a certain level and then I would self-sabotage and crash it all. Just an amazing thing. All right. So Startup Nation is looking to hear what are your top three tips or strategies, practical, tactical strategies they can implement in their business this year, regardless of their industry, to cross their 100K mark in 2020. What do you got for them? One, start talking to people who are struggling with the thing that you struggled with where you think you can add value. Talk to them more. Talk to your customers more. Too many of us are just creating in a vacuum. You think it's great. I did this too. I made this perfect business plan that I spent a whole summer working on and then I took it to market and it's like, oh, nobody actually cares. But in my head, it was genius. Mm -hmm. So start talking to potential customers more, people who are struggling, people who could use your support in something and go before pitching them anything, just asking them what they're struggling with, how they're struggling with it, and then trying to find a way to be able to provide value and help them. Two, look at your schedule and make sure that your actions map to your ambitions. Too many people in startup world, and, and not even startup world, like even beyond it, but I get that that's your audience, is you're starting and you're stopping, and you're starting and you're stopping, and you have this amazing moment, you get inspired by something, and then you're on fire, and then the next day you're back to where you were before. One of the biggest things that prevents entrepreneurial success is just a consistency in the momentum. On my YouTube channel, it's 11 years old now. It took me five years to get to 7,000 subscribers and then six years to get to two point whatever million. Now, wow. part of that was I was part of the same problem, right? I wasn't making consistent content. YouTube was also a slightly different beast 11 years ago than it is right now. But it was every day grinding away, making videos, right? I've done 6,000 videos on my channel. I'm, I'm not naturally talented or gifted. I'm, I'm an introvert by heart, uh, which doesn't come across in interviews and stuff like this, but I just, I just kept going. It, it actually made me sad when I passed people like Tony Robbins on YouTube and other people that I looked up to. It's like, the only difference is I just kept making content and they kind of put stuff out there. And so you want an ambitious life you have an ambitious per uh, uh, mission, purpose that you're chasing down. You need to match that to what's in your schedule. I need to see in your calendar where are you spending time to achieve the goals that you have in your life. Because if you're not spending time with them, they just be, they're just these hopes and dreams as opposed to actually becoming realized. Um, and then as, if I had to pick a third point, I would say making sure 
that you start your morning with the thing that makes you feel bold and connected to your purpose. Most people have a morning routine. Mm -hmm. uh, chances are your audience has a morning routine. Most of America wakes up like an accident and just start responding to other people's emergencies, right? You pick up your cell phone and you're responding to somebody else's demands on your time. And that's how people start their day. Chances are though people in your audience have some kind of morning routine. The problem is most people just check the box of the morning routine. So, you know, if prayer is part of the morning routine, awesome. There's a big difference between deeply connecting to the prayer you're giving and saying versus just going through our father eight times and say, check, right? <laughs> But that's the thing. Most of us are just checking the boxes of the morning routine. The most important thing of a morning routine is the feeling you get out of it. You need to be feeling bold, ambitious, ready to take on the world because nobody wakes up like that, right? Nobody wakes up. Tony Robbins doesn't wake up. It's like, yes, Thursday, let's go destroy this day. It's amazing. Like nobody wakes up like that. Doesn't but he run and jump in the cold water in his backyard or something? He'll actually start in, in a sauna and then jump into a cold plunge. Yeah. But, but to your point, like he's got, he's got a practice where he'll do breathing exercises. He'll do gratitude exercises. He'll do his, his sauna into the cold plunge and then, and, and working out. Right. And that's part of his daily routine. Maybe that's the best thing ever for you. Maybe that's the stupidest thing in the world for you. Awesome. But he has a routine that sets him up for success that demands excellence every day. And successful people do that. They have routines where they demand excellence because they're not waking up all fired up. So I think this is where a lot of startups fail is that you look at someone who's had a lot of success and you say, look at how much energy that person has. Look at how they're off crushing it. I can't be like that. I'm not naturally like that. Neither are they. But they have routines that set them up for success. So you know, if, if listening to your first 100K always gets you feeling bold, powerful, confident, great put it as part of your morning routine. So I'm not trying to judge what makes somebody come and feel bold, powerful, confident, alive. But the fact is people aren't feeling that daily. You've, you felt it at some point in your life. It's just not consistent. So whatever that thing is, your morning routine has to make you feel bold and courageous by the end of it, or you did it wrong. Either you're doing the wrong things or you're not doing the things with enough intention to get the feeling. Evan, I want to sit, let you know that you're the first guest on this show. And I've interviewed people from doing 100,000 last year to 200 million last year. Okay. You're the first one to go deep into the morning routine okay. and actually uh, point out the intentional part of it. Yeah. It's, the first it's one and, and, and saying, hey, there's a difference. So what do you do specifically in your morning routine? Um, has it changed? In other words, does it wear out where it, it started out where you know, for maybe a year it was working and you're feeling bold, powerful, confident, and then it wasn't, you have to shift. What does that look like? The, the most important thing for me, so I've, I've got a morning routine and part of it will be, um, I take the dogs out in the morning and I get some, you know, sun or and I'm, I'm in Toronto right now. It's not so sunny, but just yeah. like fresh air. Um, I'll always do a, 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 we call a breathing hug with my wife or we'll, we'll hug heart to heart and then take two deep breaths in and out together. Um, and, and some kind of fun little things, I guess more from my personal side, but the most important thing is what I call sore. And what is the thing that makes you sore, that makes you feel bold, courageous, alive, confident? For me, it always ties to service. So it's, I'm here in my office, you know, we're, we're under Corona uh, alerts, you know, across the world, I guess right now, I don't know when this is gonna be released, but we're kind of in the thick of it, everybody's home. This is actually super easy for me. I'm introverted, I'm, I'm here all the time anyway, this is not a big problem. But the disconnect, which is easy for me to miss sometimes, is I'm just here. Like, it's hard for me to think 300 million people are on the other side of that camera. And so it's, it's hard to wake up every day and just realize the importance and gravity of the work that I'm doing or I'm capable of doing. And so part of my morning routine has to be service to others in the way that I can do it, which is an entrepreneurship. So I'm always sharing a message every morning uh, usually on my Instagram, uh, that is that makes me feel like the work I do matters. Today has to matter, not what I do over my lifetime. Today, today has to matter, and getting that intention. If I don't, if I don't feel it after the first one, then I'll do I'll do some DMs to people. I'll read some comments. Like I need to get the feeling that what I do matters, and therefore today matters, and I have to show up for what I'm doing. Um, on, on a day like today, it's easy, right? Uh, Thursday is my public facing day. I'm doing interviews and hangouts and podcasts. 
all day long and I get to hang out with awesome people like you and it, it's easy because you're bringing energy and I'm feeding off of that. On, on my filming day, which is Tuesday, it's just me and the camera. And it's easy to just coast off of what I've done as opposed to remembering, no, this video I'm gonna make could be a life-changing video for somebody. And I have to bring that energy to it because if I don't, it won't be a life-changing video for them. So do you just like say that to yourself out loud and all of a sudden, like magically, it just creates that feeling in you? Because I have done the videos and I tap out when I'm not having another human being on the other side of the camera or in front of me. Like, how do you, how do you push through that? Sometimes the voice in my head, um, that's usually a secondary step though. I usually, I need to connect to people and see the results. So uh, I'll make an Instagram story and, it, and I know that's being reached, right? I'll look at some comments or, or I'll go to an old YouTube video that I put out yesterday or last week and I'll see, Evan, thank you so much for blah, 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 blah. It's like, it's hard to imagine 300 million people, but you can see Joseph. You can see the one. Yeah. And like, I, and I see yeah. the face. It's like, I helped that one, that person sitting there in Arkansas. I helped that person. Right today, I gotta help them more, and then I carry that energy into making the content. All right, I really get that. Thank you for going there. Now, what do you say to my listener who has seven followers, and they I, yeah. right, and they don't have that feedback? I, How do I they love get sort up? So when I started uh, in speaking, I used to have this big wave of whenever, and I mean, if you do speaking, you know, when you've, after you come off stage, you feel amazing, you help them, you get the Q and A, you're sitting there for another two it. hours, help, like it's amazing. And you wake up the next day, it's like, where did it all go? Where's so my next? Start over. I, it's brutal. So it what is. I used to do was um, I would take the feedback because I really felt it, it was heavy. Like I, I'd go three weeks between speaking gigs at the start. Um, and so I would take the feedback that people would give me and I actually threw it together into a PowerPoint file. But then I would watch it in the morning and I put like um, Michael Bolton, Go the Distance as the soundtrack. <laughs> and then I would watch it and I would re remind myself of, yeah, like I helped that person, right? Yeah, I am, I am capable of doing great things. Yeah, like today has to matter too. Um, that, so that's what I did pre-YouTube, um, pre-social media. This, this, YouTube wasn't a thing, you right. know, 16 years ago. Um, now so, to what so to clarify, yeah. you took like physical evidence of yeah. impact that you had in other people's lives curated that content put it into one thing with some music that you really love michael yeah. bowden I, I won't judge you but you put it all together right <laughs> and 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 it pumps you up every morning and you just played like your own music video yeah to get you pumped up alive courageous yeah. and create those feelings and here's the thing this is where most people mess up you have to watch the video and feel it because putting the video on, you could check the box. Yep, watch my video. But if you're putting your socks on and brushing your teeth and doing the dishes or making your life, you're not checked in to the actual process of why you even made that thing in the first place. So if you're going to sit down for, for three minutes or however long that song is, uh, or you pick another song, great, <laughs> right? Like one of the things on my list now is I, uh, we, I celebrate. So I put on a song and every morning I celebrate because music and movement is the fastest way to change your state. So it takes me from a place of being not, not negative, but just kind of base energy, low energy. Like I just woke up, go to the bathroom mm -hmm. and, then, and then celebrate. And so I put on a song that I love. <laughs> it's not Michael Bolton anymore, but something that's <laughs> going to make me dance. And then, and then just try to dance, just try to have fun, like play with my dog and just shake and move as opposed to trying to match it with something else. I could, I could easily dance and like be on my email and check like, hmm, what's coming up today? And I could check off the box and say, I danced, but no, I didn't. I didn't mm -hmm. get the feeling. The intention matters. And that's mm -hmm. what most people are missing. So what you can do if you only have 12 followers or whatever, uh, thank them. Like I would, I would, this is how I grew my Instagram. When my wife was, you know, in Costco or whatever, I'd sit in the car and I'd do video messages one by one thanking people. So I'd, I'd make him at, hey, Joseph, really appreciate the follow, man. Hope you're doing well. Wishing you an amazing Thursday. Believe, send, right? But in those like eight seconds is, is the juice starts to come out. Joseph is following me. Like he, he's following me for a reason. And I just sent some love today. Like we're, we're built to serve. It's why my book is called Built to Serve. You are built to serve. If you're not happy, it's because you're not serving. And so finding a way to 
to either serve somebody every morning or tie what you're doing to service somehow every morning on an individual basis, not on the, not on the hey, 50,000 people downloaded this episode, doesn't, doesn't compute. If you did that, you will automatically have a much more powerful day. I really like what you just created there. I think that many of us in my audience, myself included, we serve people because we're naturally good people. People tend to want to help each other, right? I really believe that. And we serve people, but we're not consistent in the feeling of, of serving others or in the feeling of impact. And it's that inconsistency in the feeling that actually uh, makes us not want to do it again mm -hmm. in a way. So what you're creating here uh, for Startup Nation is, hey, here's how you actually create or manufacture the consistent feeling, not in a fake way. It's very real and very authentic, but you do it in a consistent way that always keeps you up and alive and courageous and feeling powerful, et cetera, day mm -hmm. after day after day. So I'm going to call it the, your morning routine. You, you bring the M&Ms, okay, which is music and movement. There you go. I like music it. Music and movement. All right. So that's key startup nation. Uh, so put that together. Uh, it doesn't have to be Michael Bolton. Don't judge him. You know, he's in Canada. Just messing with you. Evan. <laughs> it's um, all good, man. But, but go pick your own. Maybe it's Michael Jackson. You know, maybe it's Beatles yeah. and stuff like that that gets you fired up. Go find that music. And I just realized in my morning routine, I do a lot of quiet time with God and just getting centered and everything, but I don't have any music. Mm. Uh, so I'm lacking that movement and motion and everything. So I'm going to apply that starting tomorrow. So thank you for that. Evan, um, go ahead and tell us about the book Built to Serve. Why should Startup Nation go out immediately right now during coronavirus and read right. your book? <laughs> well, I, I know we're getting crunched on the time. Um, I, I honestly didn't come here to, to pitch anything. I just want to bring value to your audience. But, but the idea of Built to Serve is you're built to serve. If you're not happy, it's because you're not serving. Serving is a human thing. It, it, serving others, it had functional MRIs on people's brains. And it hits the same part of your brain as having food and having sex, which are both pretty important things as well as, as a human. Um, so it, it's hardwired into us. We want to serve. Some people want to serve the world, probably your audience, big mission, big vision, want to serve the world. Other people don't have a big mission, but, but they still, they're built to serve the 25 closest people to them. It still comes down to service. If you're not happy, it's because you're not serving others. So then how do you serve? Most people settle for crumbs, uh, like buying the coffee for the person behind you in line or holding the door for somebody. It makes you feel good, but it's, it's crumbs compared to what's actually your purpose. So I walk people through a, a three-step process of, of who, why, how to figure out your purpose and then turn that into a business so that you can not just live your purpose on the evenings and weekends while having to have a job to support yourself, but to be able to make money doing it, hire a team to be able to help you do it and have a much bigger impact. So and where that's it in like 90 seconds. Yeah, that was good. That was good, buddy. <laughs> uh, where can Startup Nation go and get, get your book, Built to Serve? Uh, Amazon, easiest spot. If you want an autographed copy, you can get it from my website. But Amazon is probably the easiest spot for most people. Awesome, brother. And welcome to my favorite part of the show. Welcome to the Hustle Round. This is okay. where I'm going to ask you 10 quick fire questions. You'll have about three seconds to answer each. Great. Think it. It's just for fun. Uh, let's go. All right. What's your favorite thing about being an entrepreneur? Uh, freedom. What's your least favorite thing? Ooh. Um, least favorite thing. I got to think about that. Uh, scariness. <laughs> so scariness. scariness. Got it. What are you most afraid of? Disappointing people. Got it. I believe we're all struggling with something at every moment of our lives. What are you struggling with right now, personally or professionally, if you're willing to be transparent with Startup Nation? Believing in myself to get to the next level. Wow. You wouldn't think that at your level. What did you spend way too much time doing in your 20s? Or your first year in business, I should say, actually. Be being scared. Being scared. Got it. What secret, <laughs> this theme is recurring. What secret fear do you have about people? That I'm going to let them down. <laughs> there you go. All right, moving on. What do you wish you had learned sooner in business? Uh, it's like it, they're all it's the same. Self-confidence, self-belief, more than any skill set. Yeah. Self-confidence. And what's the new habit you want to form? Ooh, if I knew that, I'd be doing it. Come on. What you got? If I knew that, I would literally be doing it right now. Like I would end this podcast and just start doing it. 
It's I, <laughs> like I, idea to action is how I roll. Got it. What's the bad habit you want to break? Maybe that's easier. This is the same thing. Uh, what am I not as disciplined on that I need to be? I don't know. I mean, I want to get working out more. I, I broke my neck last year, so I'm slowly getting back into it. So get Got exercise it. back in. Pick three words to describe who you are now. Um, believe, entrepreneur, uh, human. Got it. Pick three words to describe who you were your first year in business. Scared, uh, ambitious, uh, uncertain. And last question. If you could come back to life, Evan, after you died, look your family and friends, your wife in the eye, give her, give them only one piece of advice about everything, about life, eternity, all of it. What would you say to them? Believe. Believe. One word. Love it. Any final wisdom? What's the one thing you want my listener to know about making their first 100K this year in 2020? Just make today count. It's so easy to think about where you're going and what you want to do. And I don't know when this comes out, but we're recording this in March and it's easy to think 100K by December. I got a lot. You don't have lots of time. Like today counts. Make yourself proud of today. So I have a thing called the pillow test that before you hit your head on the pillow, are you proud of the day that you put in, the effort that you put in today? Even if you didn't get results, you're proud of the effort that you put in. If you did that every day, you'll hit your 100K. If you're focused on just, I'm going to, you know, by the end of the year, I'm going to hit my 100K and you take today off, you're not going to do it. So you need to make today count. Like your grandkids, you're going to make something today that your grandkids are going to see. Love it. Startup Nation, go find Evan at evancarmichael.com. You can find his book at believe.evancarmichael.com forward slash built to serve. I'll put that in the show notes for you. Evan Carmichael, thank you for coming on, impacting one person on planet Earth through this show right here today. You, my friend, are going to sleep really peacefully on that pillow tonight. <laughs> well done today, sir. I hope so. Thank you for the love, man. Appreciate you. You got it. God love you. Startup Nation, you cannot show up authentically in your business without building faith in your business. If you want to have that conversation on the faith side of things, go check out my other podcast called Broken Catholic. On that show, I interview all different guests about why the world isn't working right now. Plus, I tackle unspeakable topics that you may secretly struggle with but won't admit. We got to get your faith right to get your business right. Go to BrokenCatholic.com. I'm Joseph Warren, and you were made for greatness. So stop being a wuss and start being a winner. Have a blessed day, and I'll see you right back here next week.